The next speaker is Momo Aflu from uh, ELME, Institute of Technology of London. And he will talk about uh, burning before painting. Art Pigment from Karim Cave. Thank you so much for the opportunity for giving me Muhammad Malflimi from the Bandung Institute of Technology Indonesia for presenting my uh, project about the synchrotron radiation X-ray and micro XRF based characterization of the rock art pigments from the Karim Cave East Kalimantan, Indonesia. First, we're going to talk about the rock art. Rock art, as Dr. M Dr. Emily mentioned before, is a figures in the form of engravings and form of the paintings and a form of hand stencil. This is the illustration of rock art creation by spotting out the pigment from the mouth of the artist, I mean prehistoric artist. The rock art motifs uh, contains a civilization, anthropomorphics or uh, figure like human, and zoomorphic animal like figures, geometrics or schematics, and hand stencil. This one is the figures of rock art engravings from the Sydney, Australia. And this one is rock art painting in the form of anthropomorphic figures from the Namibia. And this one is the hand stencil in the positive hand stencil and the negative hand stencil from the Patagonia, Argentina. Next, the rock art in Indonesia. Indonesia is one of the countries in South Asia with the many prehistoric rock art sites distributed around the island of Sumatra. We have the Harimau Cave in Sumatra. We have in, in Java, in Kalimantan, we have a Putusibau, Putu we have Sankulirang, we have Katabang, and in Sulawesi, we have Kolonad Kolonodale, Lindu, Maros Pangkep, and Muna. And we have also in Papua, we have some such uh, rock art site in Papua, especially in Misal. This one is very characteristic. Uh, recently reported that the oldest hand stencil dated to 39,000 years before prison, and this one is the the uh, the hand stencil figures, and this one is the figurative in the form of the zoomorphism, the oldest figurative rock art dated 40,000 years before prison, and this one is the oldest hunting figurative in uh, fo uh, found in the Maros Pangkeps in the South Sulawesi. We have uh, it is dated 44,000 years before prison. It has been reported by Albert in 2014, 2018, and 2019 in Nature. Rock, about rock art research in Indonesia. Indonesia, we are a developing country, so the main focus of rock art research in Indonesia is still on the meaning and the religious aspect of rock art. But only 70%, we are focusing on the chemical composition or the physical chemical studies of the rock art. However, actually, the physical chemical studies, we could uh, have an information about the pigment composition, about the pigment provenance studies, about the indirect dating, about the pigment preparation techniques, and the withering potency of the rock art. One of rock art site or rock art region in Indonesia is Sangkulirang Mangkalihat region. The Sangkulang, Sangkulirang Mangkalihat region is located in the East Kalimantan. This one is Kalimantan Island in Indonesia. It's located here. And this rock art region have uh, uh, entirely uh, 15 uh, caves uh, contains rock art. One of it, uh, one of the rock art uh, in, uh, on this site uh, is dated 40,000 years old, the oldest in the world, as I, as I mentioned before. Interestingly also, this rock art region contains a drawing, a drawing technique evolution. This one is the zoomorphic motif uh, painted with a reddish orange pigment dated 40,000 years old. And this one is the hand stencil motif uh, dated to 20,000 years before prison in the Liang Tewet cave. And this one is anthropomorphism motif, the black pigment painted with the black pigment dated 4,000 years old. And it is uh, 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 correlated with the migration of Austronesia to Indonesia from the Formosa Island. This one is a very unique because uh, Actually, the purple pigment is uh, commonly prepared by the heating of the, uh, the, the red ochre. So uh, in this era, the people or the prehistoric community already introduced fire for preparing the pigment. And this one is made by the charcoal. So they already introduced uh, uh, the burning or the charcoal uh, from the burning process 
to paint the rock art. One of the rock art cave in Sangkular Mangkalihat is Karim Cave. The Karim Cave contains a very unique a figurative. This one is a figures, uh, uh, maybe is quite similar with the Tapirus Indico species, the extinct species in Malaya, or we call it Malayan Tapir. Uh, it's already extinct uh, 6,000 years before present. This one is painted by the Dark Red Pitman, and this one is the uh, beehives like. Uh, figures, which is a uh, very uh, similar with the beehive uh, tree in Kalimantan. This one we could see uh, this was uh, uh, maybe it is fading, but uh, actually when we uh, 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 change uh, and we uh, zooming this uh, picture, this one we could have a figure something like this one with the beehives, and this one is hand stencil figures painted with red bit, uh, with red pigments. So we're gonna analyze this. Uh, th these different pigments, dark red pigment, the purple pigment, and the red pigments as object of our research. So the materials of the research is the three pigments sample with the purple, dark red, and red use. This one is the, uh, the sample of the purple pigment from the behaves like figures. And this one is the uh, dark red pigment from the uh, tapir figure. And this one is uh, the, red, uh, per uh, the red pigments from the uh, hand stencil figures. It is our uh, samples uh, under the microscope, uh, the optical microscope, and this one is Mansell color from the Perahu Institute in the Griffith University. We use it for the for, uh, to categorize the color of the pigment. The challenge of the research this is uh, are the small amount of the sample due to the archaeological consideration of the cultural object, and the sample in the powder form due its low mechanical stability and highly fragile. And the sample has low content of the coloring minerals. The solution, so we apply the available synchrotron radiation based on characterization in the Southeast Asia. We have Synchrotron Light Research Institute in Thailand. Due to its high intensity a beam in a broad spectral range, high collimation, and fast time measurement, it could provide a high resolution data and lower detection limit. So we do the several characterization. We do the X-ray powder diffraction characterization. We do X-ray micro X-ray fluorescence by using laboratory XR, XRF, uh, by using Orbis ADUX. And this one is the SANES uh, by using fluorescence mode due to the uh, lower concentration of the uh, iron. This one is the result of the X-ray uh, uh, powder diffraction characterization from the purple pigment, from the dark red pigment, and the, and the red pigment. This one, we could see that all of the pigment sample contains of gypsum, content of calcite, jute, because the gypsum and calcite is a, a minerals on the rock art, uh, in the, I mean the rock wall in the karstic region. So this one also we could see weavelite. Weavelite is uh, the uh, the byproduct of the reaction of the me uh, metabolism of the microorganism with the calcium minerals, and this one is a hematite. Hematite is uh, a hematite is uh, commonly used uh, to make a purple, uh, to make a red pigments, something like this one, and we we we, we assume and we conclude and that the hematite is a, a coloring agent of the materials, of of, of the pigment. I mean, uh, and we do the, uh, the SEM characterization uh, to make uh, to making sure uh, the uh, the existence of the we we will light, so we could have the trait like morphology. Uh, something like this one that's supporting the wavelet finding because the wavelet is coming from the reaction between the, uh, the uh, oxalic acid from the microorganism metabolism and the calcium minerals, uh, calcite or calcium sulfate, and, the form, uh, and it forms the uh, calcium oxalic or wavelite phase minerals. And then, uh, what is the difference in the hematite between the three? Uh, between the three types of a pigment. So we zoom the highest peak of the hematite, look at it here, at a 22.1 degree. So we could have a different properties of hematite. The, 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 the peak of hematite and the purple pigment show very strong compared to another pigment. So we could see, we could analyze by using the crystallite uh, size, by using the shader formula. So we, ha we, we have the, the FWHM value of the purple pigment is higher compared to another pigment. Then the crystallinity on the purple pigment is higher than the dark, dark red pigment and the red pigment. 
so the crystalline size of the purple pigment is high, uh, larger than the dark red and red pigment. So we could conclude that the purple pigment, yeah, presumably uh, obtained from the heating of the ochre in higher temperature because in the crystalline, uh, in the crystalline minerals, so uh, by using heating treatment or by using the annealing or uh, sintering process, we could have the more crystalline materials and we, we, we get a sharper peak. And then uh, this one is micro XRF characterization. This one is the elemental composition pigment. We could see that the hematite on the purple pigment is higher than other pigment. And the characterization by using uh, elemental mapping, by using micro XRF, we could see the, the irons is only located uh, entirely the brownish part of the, pig, of the sample. The brownish part means the pigment and the brighter one is the rock. So the iron is only located on the, on the burnished part. So meaning that the characterization from the XRD, the hematite, is the, uh, is the coloring agent is true. It's already confirmed by the micro XRF characterization. And the last characterization, we use scenes. The scene spectrize, uh, uh, it is, uh, we obtain by using uh, in the powder form. The scene spectra, we compared with the several standard, the FEO, the uh, FE. Uh, uh, iron hydroxide or, or gutite, and this one is a hematite. We could see that spec the, this spectra is uh, quite similar with the, uh, the hematite. And we do the analysis of inflection point, and we get the energy H position on the KH is located in the 7126.6 oh, EV, is uh, indicated the, uh, the iron 3 oxidation state. So actually, we do the linear combination fitting analysis also. The linear combination fitting is quite uh, similar with the hematite. It's 100% uh, uh, contents of a hematite, not another uh, iron oxide, iron three oxidation state species. And then we uh, do the uh, deconvolution of the pre H saints FAKH peaks. This one is the result, and we have the different absorption phenomena of the three pigments. This one is the purple pigment with the higher absorption on the EG uh, transition. And this one is quite low compared to the, the purple pigment, but it has a lower in the uh, 3-2G uh, uh, transition. And uh, so we could, have, uh, uh, we could have the ratio of the peak intensity, so the purple pigment is lower uh, than the dark red pigment and the red pigments. We assume uh, that there is an octahedral distortion on the purple and dark, uh, in the purple pigment, higher than another pigments due to the heating process. The heating process uh, could uh, change the geometry of the coordination uh, around the iron atoms, uh, I mean the, around the Fe3 plus ions on the, crystal, uh, on, on the hematite crystal. We come from this with the centroid plot of the pre-H peak. The result indicate the presence of the distortion of the purple pigment uh, uh, due to the octahedral coordination around the iron as a result of the different preparation techniques by burning the ochre at a different temperature. This kind of the uh, hypothesis, or the, this kind of the assumption is already confirmed by Bora et al. 2000 and, uh, 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 2012 in the case of the synthetic uh, hematite. So we jump to the conclusion. The each pigment are consistent of a hematite originated from the red ochre. The purple pigment show the higher crystallinity than uh, dark red and red pigment. The purple pigment has a higher hematite content than dark red and red pigment. The purple pigment has a higher, uh, I mean, the purple pigment show the lower T2G uh, compared to EG absorption ratio due to the higher octahedral coordination distortion of the iron as a result of the higher temperature burning pretreatment. The different each pigment material Whispers, uh, was personally caused by different temperature burning of burning occurred during the pretreatment. So this one is, is our schematic. So uh, 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 this one is f uh, the purple, this one is the dark red, this one is the red. So higher crystallinity and the higher trilmar treatment. It is our uh, uh, hypothesis. So the further research, yeah, uh, we, uh, we, we, go, we are uh, need to uh, applying micro X at characterization. We are obtaining suitable sample to get the deeper information about the crystal properties, especially about the cross section of the, the pigmenting materials and the applying of micro sense characterization to get a more representative result about the electronic structural differences between each pigment. So thank you. 
This research was supported by ITB and the Synchrotron Thailand Central Lab. And this research was funded by the Minister of Education of Indonesia and PMDSU Scholarship. Yes, thank you. Just a comment, since you made the link to Namibia, to Twiffy Fontaine, uh, yeah. and you showed a painting with a beehive. Yes. Oh. I, I've just seen a beehive in Namibia, uh, in, in the paintings in the Irongo Mountains just two weeks ago. Yes, thank you. Could you? Yes, this one. Thank you, great talk. Uh, do you plan to work on uh, maybe model samples to perhaps precise the firing temperature of your pigments? Go back to, to try to have a precise value of the heating oh temperature? The heating. Okay. A actually, uh, the heating temperature, when uh, another, character, uh, another research already published about the synthetic, uh, uh, synthetic iron oxide of the hematite, the uh, the already prof uh, the already obtained the purple pigment in uh, the uh, 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 900 degrees Celsius in the form of the purple pigment, changing from the, the red one. Yes, we have an idea. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting research. Uh, I don't have a very technical question, but I'm uh, looking at the handprints in the top right. This one? Yeah, so they're made at different moments, but how did they avoid blowing over earlier handprints so that they remain sharp? Do you have any idea about that? Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, you mean the size of the hand? No, w what I mean is that they're obviously not made on the same moment. But oh. I, I imagine if you blow ochre over it, then you will cover an earlier handprint, and they all seem quite sharp. So I'm just wondering what they used to not blow over an earlier handprint uh, as order to obscure it then. Yes, uh, th thank you for, for the question. Actually, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's uh, sometimes like that, but I, 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 I could uh, answer that, th this, this question. But as uh, some other uh, site in, in, the, in, the, in Indonesia, uh, so many objects is repainted. So this one maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, one uh, one hand prints is uh, made first, and then another hand they they made another hand, and they made for another hand, and then I don't know. It's yeah. It's, it's too, maybe uh, it is too archaeology because I, uh, my background is in chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mo. Yeah, thank you so much. And we can thank again the, the speakers. Yeah.